Hello and welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Adam Cellini. In Cuba tonight, nine days of mourning have begun and they will end with the burial of Fidel Castro's ashes. The 90-year-old Cuban leader died last night after ruling his country for 60 years. Castro was the last of the 20th century's communist strongmen. His death the end of an era. And as ABC 7, ABC's Jim Ryan reports from Miami, it's unleashed a torrent of mixed emotions. Fidel, Fidel, In Havana, tears. Fidel, Fidel. For the people of Cuba, he was everything, says this man. In Miami, cheers. Thank you, God. In death as in life, Fidel Castro is provoking powerful emotions. To many, a heroic liberator. To many others, a bloody tyrant. The young Cuban revolutionary shot his way to power in 1959, overthrowing a pro-American dictator and then declaring Cuba a communist state. For the next 50 years, Castro was a thorn in Washington's side. In 1962, American spy planes found evidence that Castro had let the Russians install nuclear missiles in Cuba. President John F. Kennedy ordered a naval quarantine and the world trembled on the nuclear brink. Yes, we were very close to the nuclear war, extremely close. The Russians removed the missiles. As he told ABC's Barbara Walters in 1977, Fidel Castro made no excuses for his heavy hand. No dissent or opposition is allowed in the public media. I could say honestly, no. As much of the world hailed a fallen comrade. Castro was the last of the great revolutionaries of the 20th century. They were dancing in the streets of Miami's Little Havana. He was a sadistic murderer who brought great suffering to the 11 million people of Cuba. This was the first sunrise over post-Castro Cuba. No one knows yet if it means a new day. Jim Ryan, ABC News, Miami. And more mixed emotions right here on the Sun Coast. Two men, one who grew up in the island country and another whose parents immigrated to Florida, agree the news is a glimmer of hope for their country. ABC's, ABC 7's Kate Flexter has more. Adam, a lot of Cubans here on the Sun Coast lived there during Castro's regime. And for them, the news of his death reopened old wounds. When Ray Rodriguez heard the news of Fidel Castro's death, it was with mixed emotions. I felt it. I felt it like it was a relief. For 12 years, Cuba was Rodriguez's home. Cuba was, was one of the most beautiful islands in the Caribbean. But in 1959, he says that all changed when communist leader Fidel Castro took over. And like thousands, Rodriguez and his mother fled to America. But they would have to give away everything, including the only pair of shoes he had. I came here with nothing, zero, nothing. I came here with no shoes. They took my leather shoes that my grandmother sent me. For thousands of Cubans, Castro's death brought that same sense of relief. But while some are celebrating, others are mourning. Many of Castro's supporters pointing to his implementation of free health care and education, while some world leaders took to Twitter, calling Castro a great friend and an eternal companion. Cuban-American Jesus Garras agrees that Castro's death is nothing to celebrate, but like Rodriguez, he has a personal connection. So this is actual personal history, which is hugely different than something you just read in a book. His mother and father both immigrated to America during Castro's regime, and he grew up hearing those stories. So all these years you've heard all these stories about things that have happened to your family, and you finally have closure in some regard. As for Rodriguez, he now has not just one pair of shoes, but many. And for him, it's moving forward that brings him that same sense of closure. Let's forgive and move on with the new, the new Cuba, the free Cuba right now. Both said they hope to see Cuba move on, but agree it will likely take years, if not decades, to return Cuba to what it once was. Adam. All right, thank you, Kate. Switching gears, let's head over to Wendy Ross for a first check on our local weather today. Wendy. And Adam, we actually had a cold front that moved through today. You may not have noticed it. It didn't produce a whole lot in the way of cold weather, but it certainly did bring a few more clouds throughout the day. And right now we're looking at partly cloudy to fair skies across our region, but no rain. And we don't have to worry about any rain developing tonight because we have drier air that has moved on in as a result of the passage of that front. And what we're going to be seeing is some 
some cooler air for tonight. The low temperatures getting down into the 50s tonight. So you can see we're going to be expecting to see mostly fair skies across the region. And then it's going to bottom out into the upper 50s for the overnight lows. The early morning hours are going to start moving on up and we'll be warming into the morning hours tomorrow. We'll let you know how hot it's going to get in just a few minutes. We'll let you know the rest of the weekend forecast. Adam. All right, thank you, Wendy. Uh, now to a developing story. According to Manatee County deputies, unknown suspects fired two shots into a Bradenton home tonight. It happened on the 2200 block at 26th Avenue East. No one was injured during the shooting and deputies are still looking for the suspect. Protesters in North Dakota have been trying for months to stop the construction of the Dakota Access Pipeline, but today more than 400 people rallying to support police who sometimes clashed with the protesters. A wave of residents in blue swept the Liberty Memorial Bridge this morning. They say they are standing in solidarity with law enforcement that have been involved with the pipeline protests. Organizers say the rally isn't pro or anti-pipeline, but some residents say that federal and state agencies need to intervene with these protests. We need to see more support of our, not only our local but our federal government in all of this. I think that there needs to be more regulations imposed because while we all have the right to assemble and protest, you know, the key word here is peaceful and things have certainly got out of hand. The rally's organizers say their purpose was to reignite communication in the community and put a smile back on people's faces. In Baltimore, another protest taking a terrifying turn. Baltimore police say an infant died during a protest of a recent police-involved shooting. The baby's mother is believed to be one of about 30 people who gathered to protest at the scene of Friday's shooting of a knife-wielding man. According to witnesses, the baby's mother was protesting and went into the restaurant to feed the baby, who then stopped breathing. The cause of death is unknown at this time, but will be investigated further. Still to come here on ABC 7, the White House may not be the only thing Secret Service will be securing. And later, you've heard of Black Friday and Cyber Monday, but have you heard of Small Business Saturday? How the sh this shopping day may be more important to the Sun Coast than any other sale day when we return. If you want 24-7 access to ABC 7's breaking news stories, weather forecasts, traffic alerts, health reports, Suncoast View, and more ABC 7 programming, now there's good news. Introducing the free ABC 7 channel on Amazon Fire TV. Your 24-7 access to ABC 7. Just search ABC 7 on the streaming device and download the free ABC 7 channel app. Or if you don't have an Amazon Fire TV, you can get one at Amazon.com. Designers do it with style. Tell me what's going on here. Because Why you don't like my hair? The Mark and Mandy Show. In-depth design ideas. What is up with the tuck tape here? Let's cover it up. Amazing beauty and fashion tips. So Halle Berry has amazing skin. She Her secret it. is coffee ground. No. Delicious recipes. Today I'm going to show you a special dish that is sure to please that special someone in your life. Watch the Mark and Mandy Show right here on your favorite channel. <laughs> What's up? I want to point out three tips for using the home computer more safely. Point away. First, stop. Make sure your software is up to date and that you've password protected your computer's login and Wi-Fi connection. Next, think before visiting a site, opening attachments, or clicking on links. Then connect, knowing you're helping make the web safer for you. And for everyone. Make Stop, Think, Connect part of your daily online routine. Whee! <laughs> The agents at SWC would like to show you pictures of all the homes that they've sold quickly for their clients. But they're just too many to show. Contact SWC today and find out for yourself. We just market your home better. ABC 7 News at 7, weeknights. Gold fever has once again swept the nation. And everyone is rushing to Florida to strike it doubly rich. Introducing the $5 million Gold Rush Doubler. We're doubling cash prizes for over $752 million in payouts. And 36 prizes from $1 million to $5 million. The Florida Gold Rush is on. The Florida Lottery. Just imagine. 
The cost of securing a president and his family may skyrocket with the next White House administration. That's because the White House may not be the only place Secret Service will have to keep 24-7 watch. Rachel Crane explains. They are fantastic people, so I want to thank the Secret Service. 725 Fifth Avenue, also known as Trump Tower, might be getting a new tenant, the Secret Service. A law enforcement official tells CNN that the Secret Service is considering renting a whole floor of the famed tower in order to establish a 24-7 command post, ensuring the safety of the future first family, who won't all be moving to the White House in January. Melania and their 10-year-old son, Barron, will continue to live in Trump Tower. When asked about the timing of their move, Trump said this. Very soon, right after he's finished the school. Regardless of when they relocate, the command post at Trump Tower won't be cheap. The going price for the space? Around $1.5 million per year. The price tag is striking, but it's not just the cost that's raising eyebrows. The Trump Organization owns Trump Tower, so taxpayers would be paying the president-elect for his own security. Officials tell CNN security plans are still evolving since many things are up in the air, like when the future first family will move to the White House and how often the president-elect plans to visit them in the meantime. A separate law enforcement official says the number of NYPD cops protecting Trump Tower could grow to 300 at a cost of about $1 million per day. The official says a separate command may be needed just to focus on security for the future president. Well, it's a big week for, week for shoppers with uh, Black Friday and soon Cyber Monday, but one event is not as often advertised, Small Business Saturday. Today marks the Small Business Shopping Day. Shoppers are advised to go out of their way to buy merchandise at smaller mom-and-pop places to help the local business community. Evelyn and Arthur is a small clothing boutique in downtown Sarasota, and they have 10 locations in Florida. Well, I think what's really great about small business awareness is uh, it brings um, our local customers and our visitors to explore um, the local flavor, something different that you're going to find in the department stores and the malls. You know, they do what they do, but when you see shop small business, that's where you really, we set apart with customer service. You can find Evelyn and Arthur in downtown Sarasota near the corner of Main Street and Lemon Avenue. Holiday shoppers looking for good deals this weekend got plenty. Adobe says consumers spent $3.3 billion shopping online on Friday alone. That's more than a 21% increase from last year on Black Friday. The firm says more shoppers use their mobile devices to find deals online. Mobile purchases surged 33%. Many shoppers still ventured into malls looking for deals. The Mall of America reports Friday was its busiest day in 24 years. Years. Siesta Village is decked out tonight in full holiday splendor as families watch Santa go by along with local groups and businesses for their annual holiday parade. The event features photos with Santa, a, a tree lighting ceremony, face painting and games lined with lights, the shops and restaurants offering their own festive favorites, live music, carolers and demonstrators of uh, gymnastics and martial arts. This year, the event is sponsored by the merchants and businesses of Siesta Village. And after saying hello on Siesta Key, Santa traveled south to Venice on his sleigh to visit those families along Venice Avenue. The annual Venice Holiday Parade is the city's tradition to kick off the holiday season. About 100 groups, including local students, Teens, churches, and service organizations traveled down the parade route to wave to onlookers. Even some members of the ABC7 News team were on a float wishing viewers a happy holiday. Looks fun. And they had to set up those chairs, I mean, oh. days in advance oh, for yes. the Venice Parade. Oh, yeah. You've got to get ready for that because you've got to get there early if you want a good seat. Yeah. You don't you just really show do. up to the Venice Parade. <laughs> Well, no, and the weather was cooperating tonight. It was. We didn't have to worry. We had a cold front that came through earlier, but it didn't freeze anybody out. We didn't have snow or rain associated with it, and it was a beautiful day today. As you can see, we are looking what we are expecting for the overnight time period and into tomorrow. So even though we had a cold front come through today, it is not cooling us off too much for tomorrow. We're going to be seeing our temperatures in the upper 70s and low 80s for daytime highs.
and overnight tonight we'll be getting down into the 50s, but we're expecting to see a beautiful Sunday. Today we had a high of 83 degrees and we are past midnight, so all of that information just fell off of our screen, but we did get up to a high of 83 today. So it was a mild day, even though we had the cold front come on through, and normally we're at 77 and 57 for normal temperatures for this time of the year. And you can see how cold it is right now over the northern parts of the state with Pensacola or Panama City reporting 38 degrees and in Pensacola it's 48 degrees, 41 in Tallahassee where FSU just won and we are looking at 46 degrees in Jacksonville. As we move into the center of the state though things have really calmed down here and we are looking at temperatures in the 60s at this hour across our viewing area. Some places though as far as you go east of I-75, we're looking at temperatures that are in the mid to upper 50s right now. So already you're starting to see that cooler weather developing. And overnight tonight, most of us are going to see those temperatures right around the 50s and 60s. The closer you are to the wa water, the warmer it is going to be for you. And we are expecting to see fair skies for the rest of the night. Now we do have that cold front that came on through. And high pressure is building in behind it. And so that's going to help to filter in some drier air for us over the next couple of days. So we are going to be quiet as far as rain. Even though we could use the rain, we're not going to see any. But if you're doing any traveling across the southeast from the Dallas area all the way up through Cincinnati, we could see some rough weather developing there in advance of a frontal system that's moving across the central part of the country. But for us, it's going to be mostly sunny throughout the day tomorrow. Showers are expected by midweek, starting Wednesday night and into Thursday. Thursday, we are expecting to see some rain. And then the next cold front comes on in. Right now, it's situated across California. It's going to be working its way across the country. This is a slow moving system. It doesn't get to our area until Friday of next week. So we'll see a next frontal system coming on through, bringing us some cooler weather by next week. And so for what we're going to be seeing this week as the work week progresses and into the end of this weekend, it is going to be beautiful once again. We're expecting a high of about 80 degrees for tomorrow. 78 to 80 degrees will be the daytime high with those showers coming in beginning on Wednesday night and Thursday. Adam? All right, thank you, Wendy. Sports is next. Stick around. You might feel like there's too many problems in the world or that, you know, you as a 15-year-old, 16-year-old can't really make a difference. It's not always about you. It's not just one person. It's, it's a group. It's a team. Just that simple act is transforming someone else's life. It's one of the best feelings in the world. It'll just make you feel so good about yourself. I'd do anything to convince you just to be a part of this. Every child follows a path in life. For many, that path will lead them to a door, a door that gives them a place to grow, to learn, to belong, a place to forge their future. Because while many doors open, these doors transform. They did for us. Support your local boys and girls clubs. Great futures start here. How long have we been married, then? For 76 years. He was kind and generous to me before we married, and he was kind and generous to me all these years. We decided on meals on wheels because I was getting to the point where I couldn't do all the things that I had been able to do. We're the Spans. America, let's do lunch. Drop off a hot meal and say hello. Volunteer by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. Have you ever wondered what it's like to save a life? Find out by donating platelets at Suncoast Blood Bank. I'm Haley Wilgus, ABC7. Platelets aid in the clotting process and are vital in the treatment of cancer and surgical patients, trauma victims, and critically ill newborns. It's tough to keep enough on the shelves because they only last five days. To donate, call the 
this number or visit scbb.org and you can help save a life. ABC 7 congratulates Suncoast Blood Bank on 65 years of serving our community. Hurricane season is here. Are you prepared? ABC 7 has the information you need. Access our special Surviving a Hurricane now. Access our special on our ABC 7 app and all our live streaming platforms. Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, and Roku. Attention blood clot filter patients. Surgically implanted blood clot filters are potentially life-threatening. Some filters are prone to breaking, resulting in pieces of the filter moving through the body and causing internal bleeding. If you had surgery to implant a blood clot filter, you may be entitled to a cash award, even if you haven't suffered side effects yet. Call the Gold Shield Group now, 888-747-5291, to see if you qualify for a cash award, 888-747-5291. Now, sports. Well, rivalry weekend in college football is at its end, but what a run we had today. Some thrillers, and as expected, a close physical game between Florida and Florida State battling for state supremacy. The Gators looking up, locking up their second straight shot in an SEC title, and the seniors from this Knowles team hoping to stay perfect against UF. First quarter, no score following a Gator fumble. Dalvin Cook takes a handoff left and bursts through for a 17-yard touchdown. The Knowles striking first. In the third quarter, Knowles up 10-3. DeAndre Francois is picked off by this vaunted Gator secondary. It's freshman safety Chauncey Gardner who brings it inside the 30 and it leads to a Gator field goal. That Gator defense coming up big all season for Florida. Later on, Francois facing a third and 10. He throws middle again and this time finds Travis Rudolph and Rudolph puts his head down and outruns this Gator defense for a 46 yard touchdown and 11 point lead and it's Florida State who wins their fourth straight game against the Gators 31 to 13 FSU seniors undefeated against Florida and Miami. They are the first class to ever do so. On to the SEC, Jalen Hurts and the number one Crimson Tide hosting Auburn in the Iron Bowl. The freshman QB would struggle early in this one. The Tigers picking Hurts off not once but twice in the early going. But the freshman and Bama offense would bounce back in the second half on fourth and four, firing or finding our Darius Stewart who just does the rest. Bama winning its third straight Iron Bowl in dominating fashion. They'll play the Gators next week for the SEC title. And another top four team, Clemson hosting South Carolina and former Florida head coach Will Muschamp. First quarter of the Gamecocks able to block the Clemson field goal attempt, but they could not block Deshaun Watson from absolutely going off. Six touch touchdowns for Watson, including this 34-yard strike to Mike Williams. And Clemson rolls into their ACC title game against Virginia Tech with a huge 56-7 win in the Palmetto Bowl. Buccaneers defensive back Alderon Werner has announced he will play Sunday despite a recent family tragedy. Werner's father, Robert Lee Werner, passed away Friday at the age of 61. Robert was in town for Thanksgiving from his home in Carson, California. Werner saying in a statement that he will play in remembrance of his father. The 27-year-old corner proved invaluable last week, replacing starter Brent Grimes, who suffered an injury against the L.A. Rams. The Bucks play host to the Seattle Seahawks on Sunday. And Lightning defenseman Anton Strawman has been cleared for contact. Strawman has been practicing in a red jersey since suffering an upper body injury against the Sharks on November 12th. Lightning head coach John Cooper saying there's a chance Strawman could return during the team's next three road games. The Lightning are still considered a team to beat in the Atlantic Division, even without Strawman and their all star center, Steven Stamkos. More to come here on ABC 7. Stay with us. In early July, Sarasota Memorial Healthcare Systems will open a primary health care facility in Newtown with multiple primary care doctors based at the practice. They will offer family medical services and provide care for un- and underinsured patients and those who cannot afford to pay. Sunday morning at 7.30 on ABC 7. 
Here's something we bet you didn't know. Nearly half of all cancers can be prevented. That's right, half, nearly 50%, mostly by making small everyday changes in your diet and controlling your weight, walking more, eating less, and eating foods that help you and your family to seriously reduce the risk of cancer. And of course, by not smoking. Visit the Cancer Prevention Together We Can website and get a free 30-day planner filled with tips, recipes, stats, and more about protecting your family. Go to prevent50.org. At SWC Properties, we pride ourselves in providing to you the very best in customer satisfaction and the secrets getting out. Maybe that's why so many people have chosen to list their homes with our friendly and qualified agents. After all, it only makes sense to list with a growing agency that markets in so many places. To list your home with SWC, give us a call at our office and ask for Teresa Witt. At ABC7, it's all about being here for you. ABC7 News at 7 with award-winning investigative journalist Alan Cohn. In-depth reporting and debate on important issues and stories in our community. With a featured topic of the day and a live roundtable discussion with community leaders and newsmakers. Plus a quick recap of the day's top stories and weather. ABC7 News at 7, weeknights. Now more than ever, we're here for you, Suncoast. The official Sunco Storm Team at ABC7. We're here for you. Gold fever has once again swept the nation. And everyone is rushing to Florida to strike it doubly rich. Introducing the $5 million Gold Rush Doubler. We're doubling cash prizes for over $752 million in payouts. And 36 prizes from $1 million to $5 million. The Florida Gold Rush is on. The Florida Lottery, just imagine. most well-known comedians playing not one but two shows tonight at the Van Wazel. The star of Tosh.0, oh, Daniel Tosh, bringing his brand of often inappropriate humor to, to Sarasota. It's been an eventful month of politics and Tosh is wrapping up November with a few jabs towards voters. If you put a sign up in your yard, you should be forced to keep it in your yard the entire duration of their term so we can check in on you. <laughs> How's that working out? Well, everything's the same? Yeah, shocking. Tosh is from Titusville and attended the University of Central Florida. Also a big Dolphins fan, which he uh, makes no bones about it on Twitter. <laughs> but uh, it's nice to have, obviously, a little humor after the election. Oh, yes. And there's <laughs> certainly a lot to make fun there of, is. isn't there? Oh, my goodness. Well, we are looking at a beautiful day tomorrow. We've got mild conditions. Head to the beach. Be outdoors. It's going to be perfect for that. Take a look. Isn't that gorgeous? Looks lovely. Yes. Yes, it does. <laughs>